Hello. I had a call from Susan. She's going to miss it today, and she wanted me to remind you to record it. And you're it's doing already it. recording. Hi, Carol. Good to see you as well. Hi. We went to the P.O. box and received your check this week. So I'll get your membership gallery done tomorrow morning, first thing. I'm Great. excited to have you as a new member and get to see your work. Thank you. We um, are scheduling for show and tell for some of the new members, which is a 20 or 30 minute or so presentation of your work over Zoom that we do show and tells once a month. So we're starting right. to schedule for the fall. So maybe I'll reach out to you by email and we can get you to show some work and get to know our people a little bit. That would be great. I, I would, I would love that. that. Um, yeah. 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 I'll, I'll go over some dates with you soon. You know, okay. we take a break in the summer just to kind of let everybody catch up with things. And uh, we're just really getting back into the thick of it. But we have a lot going on. So I'm very excited. Yeah, we got people coming in. Welcome. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Becky. Um, feel free to introduce yourselves once you get settled in. We're going to wait a little bit to get started before people come. Hi, Jean. Hope everybody's having a productive summer and finding some creative outlets. I'm just starting to teach a lot again. Good. Yeah, things getting busy. But I do find time to fit in some zine activities. Um, zines are so quick and fun that you can really put out some interesting content. If you do them frequently, they can become almost like a journal substitute and really kind of tap into like what's pissing you, in my case, what's pissing me off the most at any given moment because I usually zine in a more uh, militant fashion than some people. But uh, yeah, I usually need a little rant. But um, sometimes we just do beautiful, cool things. Um, there's a whole lot of those inspirational zines out there as well. Yeah. Judy, are you going to contribute to our zine swap this year? Yeah, I, I didn't understand, I'm sorry. I said, are you contributing to our zine swap this hope, year again? I hope so. I have too many words. I need more pictures. <laughs> ah, okay. It's a little editing still. I had a submission today. Uh, oh. Jane Lowy um, submitted hers today, which was nice to see one come in. I have several to choose from, so I guess you could say mine's already done too. Good. I don't know if I'm doing two or one. Probably, probably two, because, you know, I, I have one couple that I do over and over again in a, like a theme, you know, style, and I might do those, do another installation of those, one of those, kind of make it the tradition, I guess you could say. Are you using the same format? Um, yes, I thought a similar format would be um, not only is the idea of the formatting kind of convenient so that you can just basically pull, you know, you have your existing file and you know where everything should be and what alignment worked for you before. Hi, Susan. Hi. We're still waiting for people to come in. So okay. we're just gonna talk for a few more minutes before I get started. But yeah, yeah, I think having, um, if you have a consistent idea um, that you wanna do like a series, I have multiple series. So I do use some of the same I say what I do because I'm very versed in Photoshop. Um, some people prefer Illustrator. Some people just do it by hand and then go to Staples, um, you know, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of different ways to zine, but um, I have Photoshop files that are, have layers. So I can substitute different layers and pull in and out and know exactly, because it's already been gridded out perfectly, you know, exactly how it's going to fold. Um, getting your folds where you want them and really getting your alignment nice is a little tedious at first, but once you get the hang of it, they go pretty quick. Yeah. I'm doing an alphabet series called ABC, um, a feminist alphabet series with 
each letter its own zine. So there'll be 26 letter zines and then one as the colophon for the series. And the deluxe set, I used to have it hanging over, actually I'm backwards here, over my shoulder on the wall. It's like this garment bag that's kind of a silhouette of a woman's body. And I have it in black and I have it in gray. So I'm not sure which one it'll be. And then I'll probably make like 10 of them. So that all, it actually has almost exactly the right number of pockets to put the whole alphabet on her body. <clears throat> it's little pockets. I think it's meant for like jewelry or accessories or something. And it has a coat hanger. So it hangs up. It was totally kind of weird that I was looking at it. And I also thought you could arrange the words and do like a pageant, you know, the pageant drape, like through her. So you could put like somebody's name or Vagenda or Virginian or any of my fun protest words as a way to display it alternatively. And they're gonna be in flesh and feministy pinky, like we're super girly colors, but black and white zines printed on color paper and all different rainbows. And you can pick which like alphabets and spell your own words or you can have a whole set. So I'm gonna have it like, you know, I'm close. I've been working on it for almost a year because I started seeing letters in my dreams and it was just starting to drive me nuts because it's photographs of things that are like or shaped to be a letter. Um, you have to wait and see. You just have to wait and see. Okay, so I always like to give it five minutes and so let's go ahead and get started. Um, basically, you notice we're recording and I usually cut all the yada, yada, yada. Um, and maybe like if it gets weird at any point, it doesn't usually get weird, <laughs> too weird. But I get to edit all this later in case it does. Um, basically, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about zines as I'm sharing some of a very specific collection I'm working on as my summer project. And these are zines um that i personally collect so i have a large personal collection i'm zine mistress or the leader of our swap every year and coordinate all that i teach zine classes and i'm just a general avid zener and lover of zines so that's kind of why this is my my little thing that i do with neva predominantly all right, so I'm going to screen share and we'll get we'll get this going. This isn't going to be a very long, uh, not a very long session, just some information and get me excited about the potentials of the zines. Have there. Okay, so here's a good place to start. Okay, great. Welcome, everyone. This is our fourth Zine Zoom installment, and now we're going to start calling our entire Zine projects zine the zine scene so neva's zine scene and we needed to kind of come up with something a little little tighter to explain the zine scene so we decided that we would start working on this and narrowing our beam a little bit because we also do outreach and the zine scene's first outing is coming up and we're very excited september 25th um, we're hosting, Neva's hosting the zine scene at a campsite that's for the Eastern Massachusetts Girl Scouts. And a bunch of the troops have been invited, um, the teenage range, like 12 to 18. Um, they're called juniors or cadets, these Girl Scouts, and they're going to come into Reading to this cool camp. And Neva's going to host a two hour zine festival. And we're going to show them all kinds of zines from this, what is called the quarantine public library. So what you're looking at here, it's just a little teeny tiny portion of a public access free downloadable zine library that two women have created. It's called the quarantine public library. It has around 200 zines that were created during the pandemic. And it really shows a crazy array of not only visual techniques, but content ideas that really do encapsulate the complete world of zines in my mind, okay? Zines are these micro little mini magazines that people have been personally publishing since about the 1940s. 
So initially it became um, a notion called fanzines with the word fan hiding in there. <laughs> fanzines were little magazines that were devoted to some type of adoration of either like a comic book character, a movie, a single star, something of that nature. Um, so like if you were grooving on the Pink Panther as like a theme, you could make you like a totally cool little scene that just you just covered with everything about Pink Panther and it was like your thing. Um, so it's always been a hub of what I refer to as self-agency. Okay, so zines don't care whether other people are interested or not. You know, zines don't care about a whole lot of things. Zines don't care if you got money. They don't care if you're a man or a woman, if you're young, old, sick, angry, happy, you know, thin, fat, you know, have a cat, have a dog. You know, all these things don't, it, it just doesn't care. You know, it's so quick and easy and it's just this wonderful explosive way to share who you are with the rest of the world in some way um so that's what the zine scene's all about it's about an empowerment idea of self-agency it's about pulling young people into the book arts um thinking about ways to market ourselves maybe it's a brochure maybe your zine you turn into a brochure maybe you become a, an activist maybe it's a social activist platform for you. Maybe it's you've lost something and you want to commemorate something that's past, a person or, you know, the earth dying. I mean, nowadays it could be conservation. It could be um, techniques for how to do a cyanotype, which is what Susan Marsh, our, our um, membership coordinator, did for one of her zines from last summer. It could be something that is purely visual that has no meaning whatsoever to anyone. It's just a feeling or just graphic design. It's entirely open to personal, personal preference in every way you can imagine. So the ideas of diversity and self-agency and just letting your, as I put it, freak flag fly, getting it out there, it's a wonderful thing. So. This collection of 200 really covers quite a range. So you're looking at, they're all exactly the same dimensions. They're all the same structure that we're going to cover quickly again here today. And I have the, I'm gonna put the link in the chat to the PDF, um, which is an instructional zine about zines for you. But here you're just getting a good sense. Um, the 200 zines, I'm making three sets of, one in black and white, one in color, and one unfolded in color so that I can keep it as a, in a uh, binder with acid-free pages. Um, and I wanna keep it two ways. I'm folding one set boxed and creating a box. And um, I see this as a really wonderful educational tool. It's gonna stay in my possession, but ultimately Neva, I'm sure will, you know, most things that are Neva's or Christina's and vice versa, it seems like, cause Neva is housed at my house right now. Since Neva doesn't have a physical home yet, one day maybe. But anyway, um, so anyone who wants to come visit the set um, can do so. I also have the set on a USB flash drive. So if somebody is interested in borrowing it and printing their own, they could do that as well. Or you could do it straight off the website one at a time, which takes a little bit of time, but you may find it works really well. So let's just take a deeper dive into some of my favorite picks. I've only printed A through G alphabetically, so I haven't really gotten that far. Um, it's about 50, I think, so far. Um, so every time I go to Staples, I do like a little set. I enjoy print, you know, printing them out, really getting a good look at them, folding them up, interacting with them. And since it's 200, I kind of wanted to make it my summertime, you know, spread that thing over August and enjoy it. Um, so let's just go ahead and take a little, little, little step forward here. So I love this one. Ampersand Duck is the name of the zener. Dear Past, the Future Wants You Back. This particular zine I like a lot because it's kind of gritty. And it's got this, I would imagine that's either like a silk screen or some kind of print of this, this one image of the, you know, the shopping cart used in over and over again in different ways with this just really gritty kind of crunchy feel. And I love this one because not only because of the grittiness of it, the simplicity, but because it's actually a do-si-do. Okay, so 
a do -si do which is back to back, is a structure that you look at forward in one direction, and then you turn it upside down and read it the other way. And it's good in both directions. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see this from the pictures I took. Let me just uh, keep going here. So you can see in the bottom corner here how that text is flipped. Yeah, so the other text is Dear Past, the Future Wants You Back. Um, so it's it's kind of an interesting play on words, but also visual. You have to be in person, I guess, to see how it, what I mean by how it's working. Again, this is our zine structure that we're using. Okay, it's called it's called an ox plow predominantly, but it has nicknames. One is um, the hot dog, one's the hamburger, and officially it is a center cut double accordion or a double center cut accordion you could rearrange those two words um, but i like calling it the ox plow because that i think um, is one that most people will refer to it can be posed in different ways which is one of the reasons why i find it fascinating because most people just interact with it as if it's a magazine but when you start unfolding and inverting and potentially using the back or potentially having what's inside showing out uh, print on trans a really light paper potentially so that you're seeing them both at the same time there's a whole lot of room for some creative experimentation within it here's just a few more given the fact that this is an invitational library that this quarantine public library the two women that founded it have reached out and asked people during 2020 to 2021 to react so you would imagine that a whole lot of people put that as their motif um, which is true um, i found that over 50 percent of what i've seen so far is completely directed at covid um, how they feel about things, um, the fact that they're trapped in this home, like, so it's home, domestic use, it's personal interactions, it's stress, it's, um, yeah, those types of things. But some people chose to go with something that was just more simple and beautiful and um, uplifting in a different way, which is some of the ones that I gravitated the strong strongest towards. I, I love this one. Um, it's really wonderful collage it's got great textures you're feeling dimensional kind of qualities with how it was photographed so you know she put a little light and an angle on it so that um the scan in this pdf actually does feel like it's dimensional stuff um when you come in close on things like this right here with that drop shadows and stuff i don't know if this is a photograph of her collage or if she did this somehow added it as a trompe l'oeil effect but her her work is just lovely and it just feels good i mean like those little pieces really do lift off even though this is a xerox you know this is a xerox so what a nice job she did of, in her reproduction yeah this is a, this is a really nice one yeah so here you're just seeing the zine sitting on top of the open zine unfolded. Andy Arnowitz. Yeah, I love, you know what this made me think of? It made me think of Wish You Were Here, which was our collaborative project really big from last summer and fall that was so lovely. And that's because we had a whole lot of people that were in that Southwest, you know, and that, that kind of color palette and feel with cactus. And yeah, I don't know. Lovely. I liked hers a lot. Here's another one that I just really thought was absolutely fantastic. Amina Chirma, they wear us too. So that's all it says. And then the rest of it is drawings of shoes. Okay. This is just brilliant. This is brilliant. Here's another one. <laughs> Sorry, I went so fast past the shoes because I was like gaining momentum because I'm enjoying it so much. Yeah, so just a bunch of spreads of really fun shoe illustrations. And that little twist of having the font, that reverse of that font, implies so much about the conceptualization without even really doing much. It's just really interesting to me how that, how that came out. And the simplicity of just putting QPL 
instead of writing out quarantine public library. Little details like that can change um, the aesthetics and just simplify and make it much more visual without having all those visuals, you know, it's cleaner, you know, a little bit cleaner. Anyway, I, these are just some of the ones so far that I just have really enjoyed. Um, again, cats, this is something you're going to see every time with me. There are a lot of cat scenes out there, and I love cat scenes, and I have quite a few. So this was obviously going to be a winner. This is just really funny. Um, this has a whole lot of writing, and the writing is literally descriptions off of the vending. These are literally like eBay and places like that that have these antique stuffed cats. <laughs> so this whole zine is literally and gives you the prices and everything tells you all the details and has a little story <laughs> fantastic look at that one on the right that almost reminds me of a dog instead of a cat I don't know, it's sad. It's saying like, take me home, I'm, I'm bummed. Condition is used. Obviously the one on the left, the person never saw a cat before. <laughs> or it got loved to the point where all of the <laughs> things came off. <laughs> wow. So this just proves the point that zines don't care. Zines don't care if you don't care. <laughs> Zines are made purely out of love of something. That's all it is. Or conversely, hate or something. But like hate and love all are kind of rubbing up against each other some anyway. But for the vast majority of this particular collection, which again is free source online, you can just surf around all day on it, but it also is available to be printed for free. Okay, which is we love free, everybody loves free. I gave them $30 to get the big file on one stick so that it's, uh, if, you, maybe if you donate that, then instead of having to one at a time pick through, you can, you know, just head on over to Staples with your USB. That's what I did, because I, I like the print of a Staples color, self-service color. I do, on a 28 pound paper, the uh, premium paper instead of the 24 pound, I just love it. So here you're seeing again, um, this idea of the quarantine public library really seemed to be seated in most people's hearts in the notion of I'm here, I'm surviving, this is me. Um, interestingly enough, the I am here was the one that as I'm printing in Staples, the most people leaned in and was like, what is that? Um, because it had a whole bunch of faces, just like saying I am I am alive, you know, I'm gonna survive this, you know, it was just like this powerful over and over again, like a mantra each page, simply these simple goofy faces. And people literally were stopping to look as I was Xeroxing, which I thought was interesting. Um, so visual doesn't have to be complicated. Kindness seems to be a theme, again, you know, this notion that there's certain cyclical kind of themes that I seem to notice, perfectionism, kindness, and then again, um, mental self-awareness, like this idea of like trying to understand yourself better. So it's kind of interesting uh, to see what people are gravitating towards in this collection. The one in the middle there, more type, fewer bullets, talked about visually and referred to the notion of making like type, like for typeset for like letterpress out of used bullets, slugs and stuff, like melting them and casting new type out of bullets somehow. But anyway, just the whole like reference of the, those words, but the whole thing was just really beautiful. Um, chunks of letterpress that had been cast yeah, so, I mean, there wasn't other bullets only on the cover and there wasn't much text. Um, a lot of these, these folks have content online that explains it. So if you go to the website and you're looking at individual people's work, 
you can hear like where they're from and maybe get their contact information and a, like a little artist statement like we do on our post when we post ours. We get a little teeny like blurb about it. Um, it isn't connected in the files because the files are just the zines. And that people ask me like, why am I not folding all of them? I'm keeping the one that's solid, unfolded and uncut. And then I'm printing on the back side of that through my home computer, the contact information I was just referring to for each of these people, which is gonna take a while to do. I haven't even started that, but that's, I wanna be able to have more about them which is a really a, a, a treasure, a, a treasure in and of itself, because the vast majority of Zane people are not necessarily um, available to share, like, what the hell is going on here with you, you know? <laughs> um, sometimes that's kind of fun, because you're, you're, you're guessing, like, what the hell is going on, yeah. All right, so on to the Quarantine Public Library, just so you have it as, is quarantinepubliclibrary.com, so you have it as a resource. When you go to the homepage, it gives you a little sense of the deal here. The, the, the individuals can be browsed by genre or mixed, or which kind of media they are. Are they using photography or that type of thing? Um, artist name, most people aren't gonna do that because, well, I guess if you're looking for your own, because you don't necessarily know. These people are from all over the world. Um, the tutorial is basically better than anything I could suggest really for you. So go to the tutorial page. On, in the last video, we actually um, did it. It's a YouTube video. It's only, I mean, it's, I, I would suggest that we do it right now because it's 45 seconds and I can continue talking over it because I don't think there's anything going on. So basically, um, same with our, our other two swaps. We're sticking with an eight and a half by 11. It's going to be white so that it's printed in black and white. And you could do two sided or one. You can see there's going to end up being eight panels for the pages. Very simple folding at this point. This person makes goes pretty fast though. You're, you're not going to do this as fast as this. <laughs> But basically, boom, and the, her fold up is just like insane, like boom, 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 and there it is. Wow. So you can see how creating the template for some kind of interesting layout would be a smart choice. They give you the written out with little photos and the steps instructions as well. So if you're not into the seeing things as a video, you can do it that way. Yeah, and this is telling you a little bit more about ideas down here towards the bottom of ways you could do some interesting layouts suggestions, but I'm thinking that you're going to have your own little flair that you decide to add to it. So it's going to work out great. I'm excited for you. This is going to be good. I like to pop in quickly to the media just to give you a sense of like other things you could add because this is going to show the whole like library just broken down so a lot of people tend to lean into hand by the hand you know so handwriting hand drawn lino cuts or wood cuts watercolor paintings you know literally illustrating it in different ways combining digital media with scans so there's a lot of different ways to go in it so you can see that a lot of people here are are really going with hand, hand work. You could mix the two together, which is fine too. You see that there are some people who get the illustrations going. This is, I've got several pieces of this woman's work just in general. So if we wanted to do this one as an individual, just to take a look here, um, this is the content I'm talking about here. So you get this like statement, you get her info, like, where is she from and what is her deal? This is a local person. That's why she's at Harvard. Okay, she's a PhD student at Harvard. That's why, because she's probably been at some of those zine festivals on the backside of Central Square um, that I have been at. And that's why I bought her work before, because she's local. Um, she's a very, um, my Harry Gams, which were, was a zine just about her having hairy legs. Yeah, that's the, that's the other one. I've shown that, I think, in this other, another workshop. 
Yeah, but here you're seeing each double page spread. So she's showing you each of the eight panels individually. So you're really getting to see each of the panels. You get to see the one sheet as a solid, which shows you clearly that you have a directional shift that goes through the middle. So one side is in one direction, one side's in the other direction. You're gonna have multiple double page spreads. You have two that are gonna be seen as a double page spread or three. You're gonna have three that are seen as a double page spread and then a cover and a backside that are seen individually. So you can plan things that way or you can throw a plan out the window, right? You can throw a plan out the window and take a piece of art that you thought wasn't working, okay? So I'm just gonna show you some stages here in a minute with an idea that takes that farther. So having to be able to design a layout seems daunting for a lot of people, but it isn't. If you, even if you can't do anything other than just put a piece of paper down, fold it up and then fill in each page with your drawings or collages, then take a picture of it. Just take a high, high enough resolution with your, and send it to me in an email. Give me a full print picture of it and I can take it the rest of the way for you if you're unable. So that's an open invitation to anyone. I did that today very quickly, got a single image you know, got rid of the border, you know, take, give me a whole image of it. Don't let it, you know, so I got rid of the border. I improved the contrast range and made sure it fit in the eight and a half by 11, right? And zing, bada bang, we were there. It was very quick for me and because I know how to do it and I'm happy to help. So you can go full on in Illustrator or Photoshop with a crazy design, be able to rotate and go nuts. Or what if you can't do that? What if you just have a word, a word document? You could do two Word documents, one going in one direction and one going in the other, and print it through the printer twice to get a single. Okay? That's potentially available as well. So there are different ways. I'm not gonna say skin the cat exactly, but yeah. <laughs> I love kitties. I love my kitty cat collection. So here are some of these ideas for more genre based ideas. So I should have probably given us something more interesting to look at while I was talking just then. So I find humor and again, so I'm calling it self agency, but the broader kind of concept where you add writing even would be called parazine or personal zine. A personal zine is really, or a parazine is really you putting your personal experience and narrative and thoughts and issues out there as your own. Um, I would say some of mine are definite. I, I don't know if I'm presenting it as my story exactly as I am trying to generalize it more broadly to feminist and uh, women body positivity. But definitely um, images, photos, artwork, these are all free game. There's a whole lot of free source content online. There's a whole lot of ways to do clip art and montage and collage and just go nutty on creating some kind of fun design. You could do it right on the small scale or you could do bigger works and then individually put in, you know, like a, a take an image. Like if you had a series of eight pieces for the pages that weren't tiny, you could take a photo of each of those A, right? And each of those become black and white and then scale it to fit on the PDF, right? I mean, I don't know the skill sets of everyone involved and I would wager it's a huge range. So I'm just trying to give suggestions to people. Ideas that work really well that I never thought would, this faint idea where you're having text that's bold on top of some kind of washed out kind of background that's kind of nice. That works really well in color and in black and white where you get this really nice play on uh, the gray tone and then like an intense black. Um, again, uh, photos, a lot of people with photos, actually literally just each page a photo or each page an artwork, like an early event. This is each page an artwork and each page has a, a consistent that smushing I don't know if you've ever done this kind of painting where you fold the paper and then put, put paint on and fold it 
and squish it and then pull it apart and keep messing with it till you get it where you like. These are cool. I like these. That reminds me, I should add that to one of my decorative technique classes sometime because it's fun to, to smush. You could also, ooh, cool. You could also smush, before you smush, put a chain, like a little metal chain or a piece of string and then smush and then pull the string out before you pull it apart. Oh my goodness. See, this is why zines are so great because this like free zine just like totally opened up a whole new world of ideas um, for me to share with my students. And remember, they were there already, but I had forgotten about the smushing. Look how beautiful that is. I know we're, we're doing black and white, but you could do that exact same idea with a high contrast black and white look and it would still be stunning. Yeah, yeah. So I think everybody's getting the idea. What other genres are we gonna, we're gonna look at? We're gonna look at um, narrative again, where you're like actually making more like a comic book. Let's get down to the narrative. I know we're going fast here. Uh, narrative. Did I pass it? Maybe I passed it. I must have passed it. Think about like telling a story or writing a story where it moves through in a chronology of a typical Western world, reading a book from front to back, the way we do instead of back to front, the way some cultures do. I like to think of it more as a visual element myself now with a few that I've been doing where you're not gonna fully get the whole thing until you open it all the way up and you mess with it some. So reading it just straight through as a quote, like magazine would, like with those pages, isn't gonna really satisfy all the way. You know, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing yet. I'm still playing with one. It's called Mush Stash, where it's mushrooms and mustaches, like handlebar mustaches um, together. Yeah, so I don't know if that one's working yet. Okay, so Quarantine Public Library, check it out. It's really great. This right here, um, for those who are in the know, is Neva's Zine About Zines. I'm going to copy this PDF and drop it into our chat. This is the fastest way to get to that. Um, it is online for in almost every zine. Um, there we go. It's online on almost every zine post in the blog section of Neva's website. Um, so if you go back and you go down to the bottom, it's basically in reverse. So you just got to keep going backwards to see all the different posts about zines from over the time period. The most recent post has some quick links to previous stuff to help you get back farther in time faster. But this is perfect. So this little zine folds up into the perfect zine. Um, so this will really give you a sense of how we operate at our fairs. So we have the Watertown Free Public Library has their Zane Fest coming up in October. And Marie Canavas and hopefully a couple of other people will volunteer to help cover the booth. I'm gonna be on the other half of the table. They're, they had so, so much interest that everybody gets only a half table. So I will be on the other side with my Zane um, and stickers and buttons and all the fun stuff. And maybe we'll have all their zines and stickers and buttons and fun stuff. And I think some of our other members might have half tables as well. So that's the next zine thing after the Girl Scouts. And we do need some, a couple people to help with the Girl Scouts still. Um, Stephanie Stigliano is our lead for the Girl Scout Zine Scene Day. I had hoped it would be more of like a jamboree kind of woohoo, but and have like a full day of like other things too. But they were like, no, 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 it's just gonna be two hours with you guys. So it's not quite the like crazy summertime jamboree idea that I thought it was gonna be, but maybe next summer we'll be able to do it the way I had in mind. I was thinking if we get some other events, the outreach is not purely self agency and us wanting to get people excited about zines, it's about getting people excited about the book arts overall. And zines is like a gateway drug into the book arts for a lot of people. So we need to get these youngsters all like ready and addicted to the book arts via zines and get them, get them out there. So I'm thinking the people that actually want to sign up for this are people who already know about it. 
So wouldn't it be good to have like a broader audience to have this be like one of many activities that draws in new people that are super excited, right? I don't know. I just want a bigger audience. So we have these on our tables for free as giveaways that promotes us and also spreads the love. And if you feel like being, you know, if you feel like proselytizing and sharing the zine love with others, please make a whole bunch of copies and hand them out because who knows who, who you're going to get like jacked up and excited over it. I've had eight year olds decide that they needed to do one for like a party invitation all the way up to like people at a nursing home who wanted to like have like a do and don't list and it became like a stinker and we had to like cease and cease and desist on it because there was some weirdness starting to happen. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, we want to turn people in, you know, go get them, but like, you know, we're not hurting anyone. <laughs> and we're not arguing over the state of the community bathroom on the fourth floor. Okay. We're not doing it. Okay, so that's that's good information for you too. Um, like I said, this is the last. It's in our Neva blog post here. We're on the website, so Zine Salat for this summer. Here you're seeing our PDF. Here you're seeing a little bit more of the yada yada. You're seeing uh, links to the pre some of the previous posts, and then we get right into the rules. Okay, black and white, no exception. Everybody's in black and white. It just makes it less expensive to share and more effective and better in the print quality. Um, every printer in the world has its own little micromanagement system about color management and doing these in color, they'd be shifting and weird. And I think it's just a nice classic, simpler aesthetic to go with this. Um, you're just enjoying a little slideshow of previous. Um, when you're part of the zine collection, I photograph all the zines with really nice high res images and I do a montage of the cover and one of my favorite spreads and um, you give me an artist statement of two to three sentences you title it you can add a Neva logo if you want and I can get you those files if you don't have access to a Neva logo and we all kind of get this nice collection and decide how many exactly they'll be and then we have someone who volunteers to make us a beautiful box housing for the collection depending on what size it is and you end up getting a whole lot of pdf files and we do that via what's called the new our, our google drive on neba's google drive if you're not connected to the drive and need to be let me know as a member that's part of your ability to communicate with us because um, we do put image files and all that kind of stuff there. So it's a PDF swap. So we don't actually physically have to be with each other to make our, our swap work out. Um, so it works, it works pretty nice. And you can see that we have just a great range of content and styles and media and people who go basic and people who go super fancy and precise. So it's really kind of fun to see the range. Um, so it's going to be an eight and a half by 11 saved as a PDF. You can do two and they could be two sided if you want. Um, two sides fine, but you don't have to do that to have a really great zine. Yeah, yeah. So here again is a little bit more of mine. Um, I'm probably going to put this one in the collection because I think it's pertinent to this year specifically. Um, Points of Connection, it's, it was made on black paper with white ink and then I reversed it in Photoshop and saved both. So one side of the PDF and the other are reverses, just very simply. It looks really nice um, to pose it in different ways so that you're seeing the black and the white and the white at the same time. Like in this view here, you're seeing it inside. So it's kind of fun to have that interplay and depending on how you set it up, you get a whole lot of different angles of view. It, for me, it comes out of the radial lines of a mushroom cap and eye line as a, I'm a photographer, so thinking about visual things, thinking about um, space age kind of related. I'm in a mid-century modern house, and I'm also thinking a lot about um, our expansion of travel um, throughout the galaxy it has really changed in the last few years a lot with privatization. 
And um, even things like race relations and the pull and straw struggles back and forth between family connections, like sending out messages. It's just a whole lot of different kind of visuals in my mind wrapped together that seem to be kind of in my head and things that I'm thinking about currently. So it's a whole lot of different ideas, but positives and negatives are definitely part of it. So I kind of thought that that suited me for 2022. I need to pop a Neba logo somewhere on it, probably a little teeny tiny Neba guy on the back maybe, or maybe not, I don't know, we'll have to see. So that gives you a little sense of that. Yeah. Here's the lovely box that Susan Marsh made for us for last year. And I did the pillow box in red for 2020. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated and I have some interesting ideas. I'm hoping somebody who's in the swap will like get excited about designing it. They don't have to make all the boxes, but coming up with the template is always a good idea. Yeah. Purse is printable on an eight and a half by 11. So everybody could PDF download it and make it themselves. But she hooked us up. She made a whole lot. She made a whole lot of them herself. She couldn't help herself. So fantastic, Susan. We love that. Okay, great. Super. Let's see. I think we're, I think we're it. Okay. Um, right before we head out, because I think I'm going to wrap this up a little. I'm going to do a little visual with get out a screen share and show just a few visuals and some ideas for picking up the pace on how do you make a zine really fast. Um, this is what's up next. And it was in that email that reminded you about today's Zoom. I know people were like, I, I don't think I ever was told. Um, with the summer, we don't send as many emails because we're all taking a break. So it was on the website, but hopefully people um, will get to see the video. So posted with love, we're going to be doing a really fun postcard exchange. Um, not postcard, what am I saying? It's a card. It's not a postcard. It is a greeting card. And we have all the details in a Neba blog post that covers all the ins and outs of it. What you're going to be doing if you want to sign up is you'll click on this, um, the sign up form. And this is what the sign up form looks like. And uh, Carolyn Lepton going to be our organizer, and she created a fun logo. I took, I don't know if you, I wanted it to be subtle, but it might be too subtle. There are uh, some of these sweetheart candies have little teeny tiny Neba logos on them. <laughs> uh, maybe it's too subtle. But anyway, yeah, I had fun with that. Um, so yeah, members get to sign up. And if you decide that you want it, once all the deadline passes of October the 1st, um, I'll tell you how many cards you got to make. And these are going to be either you can mass produce, like make a print or like a jelly print and, or a plate and print them over and over. I'm probably going to be doing like really fun. I call them a morphe, which is like crazy love in French. And it's going to be heart, like marbling with the drag through the hearts. So making like heart shapes and the marbling, you know, um, yeah, they're, they're going to be suggestive and kind of romantic. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing for my card. So each one will be obviously unique because that's the way marbling is. Um, and then uh, again, Susan Marsh, who does these fantastic boxes and is such a wonderful help and board member and volunteer, she's going to she's coming up with a really nice box that is super cute. So cool. I've already, you know, we've already got ideas going. So that'll get its housing once we know how many cards as well. So these things are moving along. I'm excited for us to be doing some more collaborations. Everybody had such a great time with Wish You Were Here. That part of the website in the main menu is still super active. And we're just really excited. Really excited to get started again since we had our break. We're all coming back fresh. All right. So I'm going to speaker view me. And uh, let's see. Pen. spotlight for everyone there we go make me a little bit bigger so that you can see what my thought is so a lot of us i'm gonna back up just a snitch a lot of us have a whole lot of weird prints in our life that are just like you don't even really know like what to do with it all that if we took and fragmented it like okay susan's gonna recognize this so this is a piece of paste paper it had another image that was even less successful and i just threw a just clear and purple swirls so if i come in closer you can see that there's a paste underneath and it's just kind of like a little crazy 
and it just was getting worse by the minute you know i was trying to save it but now when i cut it and fold it up it's a lot more manageable and i can either use the back or not okay so if i come in close like in just a few minutes of like 10 minutes literally before we did this i pulled out some stuff out of my magic weirdness box that i have and i found a transparent washi this is called washi tape washi tape is a japanese paper tape product it doesn't hold really great but our original zine doesn't have to hold up past its scan its photo or its visit to staples you know what i mean i mean this is a permanent art that we have to worry about. So I'm not going to worry that it's washi tape. This has a very distinct going through it. You're not really seeing it so good right now, but it has the paste underneath seems to move. And I looked at it and I reacted to it. And I gave myself 10 minutes in my weird box to react. Okay, I found the washi tape with arrows. I started thinking about arrows, directionality. I was thinking, if you made that tape run uh, low, not in the middle, but a little below, exactly across the entire thing. So like one strip of tape is going to travel its way across. So I'm going to add the component of this clear tape. It's clear with arrows. It has a little hint of white in it, not much, but it's almost transparent. Okay. I found some image transfers, which we're going to cover really briefly here in just a second. Image transfers, and Jean's going to know about image transfers because I did a great demo for the Newton Art Association on this, and we made a holy hell mess of the room, but had a wonderful time because it's a little, a little messy. So I took a bunch of weird clip art, including this head. Uh, you can't really see it here, I don't think, can you? Oh, it's shiny because it's plastic. You can't see it here. It's basically an outline of head with a bunch of different arrows going at it. Okay, so the arrow motif and this idea of your confusion and you're being pulled in directions. Okay, so this thing is moving, it's moving, it's moving. And I found more of like weird scraps that just seem to be kind of interesting. Okay, more of that same hot pink. It kind of goes as an overlay. This is like clear plastic packing tape transfer. So when I glue it onto the base, the base is going to show through it. So it's transparent collage. Okay, it's not cutting a piece of paper out that you can't see through. It's a piece of plastic with the ink embedded in it. Okay, and I'm going to layer that on and I'm going to create something that's giving an insinuation of confusion and flurry of motion in a direction that almost implies narrative. So I haven't even thought of words yet. I'm just getting some bases in there of like an I general feeling based on this weird piece of art and how it folded up and made me feel. So it's not really about anything yet, but it's leaning towards being about something. Okay. I will follow up after I post this video and I feel like next week, I'll, I'll put in a post and put some of the follow-ups on what the stages happen with what I was just talking about so that you can actually see where it goes. But before we kick out, I'm gonna throw you some love here with image transfer technique, okay? Printing content that doesn't have a coating on it that's pretty lightweight works best. You can do newspaper and magazine clippings, some types of Xerox, some type of inkjet, some type of laser. You have to try it because some things don't work. So don't make a whole lot of copies of something till you know for sure it's gonna work the way you want it to. So you have to experiment because it's the ink, whether it's water soluble or not, and how well it's stuck to the back of the paper. So I'm gonna take packing tape. I've got this weird scan of my fingers with like me reaching up. It's part of this idea of like the struggle. And I think somewhere in this piece, it needs to feel like that big head, that little head is being pressured somehow. Um, I, I don't know why this big hand has to come into this little book, but it needs a big hand. Okay, so I'm taking my packing tape and I'm running the packing tape right across the image. Okay. I, I, I could do a screen share with a phone, but I didn't get a chance to set it up. And we're just going to be quick with this because this isn't that hard. 
Okay, so I've got packing tape and I'm gonna rub it or you could do what's called burnishing. You can take your bone folder and on a smooth surface, rub, 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 rub. We're getting the ink that's on the print stuck into the adhesive side of the clear, okay? Right here is a Pyrex dish with water in it. I'm gonna take that in there and I'm gonna wet it. Okay, so our goal is to rub the paper off the back and the ink stays put, okay? And I'm just using one hand and this has only been in here for a few seconds, but you can see the shred is starting to come off. Okay, wow, this one happened fast. It's a good one. The creepy hands, I like it when it's, it's clear because it becomes memory. I mean, think about the potential uh, conceptualization jump of something being frosted and sheer and kind of beat up and ethereal kind of looking, the way these image transfers turn out. Okay, it could be memory, right? It could be the past. It could be the future. It could be a dream. It could be a pot-filled room with the haze in front of your face. It could be Alzheimer's. It could be, I mean, just uh, the sun in your eyes. You know, like you're blasted with the sun in your eyes to the point where you can't see. It could be deceit, right? Deceit, if you think about it, right? I mean, that's, that's a, most people wouldn't put that on my list, but that could be fascinating because it's not the truth, right? You're seeing sort of the truth. Maybe it's like a white lie. There's conceptualization potential. Ooh, right over the top of my forehead. Oh. I'm so stressed and my zine and life is pushing down on me. Yeah, look at that, that's fantastic. Okay, only in seconds. Okay, people ask me, well, how do you attach it? That's the next question. If there's clear enough, a lot of white in the image, there might be enough sticky left to keep it on there long enough for you to make copies or take your photos. But the other way would be to, to use a product that I'm obsessed with that all my students get to hear about, which is called double tack or adhesive transfer tape. Um, you can buy it on rolls and like Blick or different art supply places. It's a double, super double stick tacky tape that works really great. You can also buy it in sheets, which is one of the ways I go with it so that I would put the whole thing down and then cut around it so that exactly you know, it's covering exactly the whole thing because it's transparent, so you can't see through it, okay? The other problem with just using straight glue is it might not dry, and glues that are white might not turn clear, you know, because it's got this piece of plastic stuck on it, right? So you have to be careful with how you apply vellums and plastics. But anyway, so you might want to experiment with that and uh, try some collage that's transparent and get a little wackier with your layers of art bits that mean nothing literally that you can charge with a conceptualization or start to put onto them uh, more concrete ideas. Um, a single word. I mean, some of these zines have no text, but some of them just have like a single word. A single word mixed into a, a set of textures can really just steer directly people into those ideas, okay? Okay, last one, and then I'll kick out because there's just too many ideas. I've got them surrounding me. Okay, let's say, since I, I love my mushrooms and radial lines lately, let's say you do some Enzos and you work into it with marker or black ink, like Sharpies, and you say, this is gonna be the basis of my zine, but I don't want that to be my zine. Okay, I go to Staples. I make a Xerox of it in different sizes. I cut them up on the spot, lay them on the Xerox machine, move them around, mess with them a little, Xerox after Xerox, okay? And then I made 50 of them. When I got done with it, I, I just made 50. Never to be copied again because I did not take a picture. I did not scan it. I just did every bit of it. This wouldn't work for us because we're swapping PDFs digitally, you know? Um, you would have to actually eventually scan it, and I probably could easily just scan this, but I like the idea of doing it directly at Staples. Have that experience, the creative experience at Staples. Go forth, my little zeners. 
I am so excited. I've already got two submissions. So we've got till September the 15th. Super happy to help. Absolutely. I'd be willing to have lunch and a Staples experience with anyone who's interested. Let's get into um, gallery view, take some questions and say hi to people. Hi, Liz. You came in after I started talking. Hi, How Christina. Are you? How are you doing? I'm great. Good I just got you. your email, so I just like decided to jump in. Sorry, I'm late. No, it's okay. I, I just we started talking early and then uh, didn't get a chance. How you been? I've been okay. How you been? Busy again and lots of gardening. So outside a lot. I know I'm very fair, so I, I don't do a whole lot of tanning. Yeah. Me neither. Awesome. Are you gonna make a zine for the swap? I'm thinking about it now. I'm yeah. Getting interested. I'm excited. I want to see who all we get such a fun array of them. Uh, I get I get really get really anticipatory, you know, it's like better than Christmas, you know, for me, definitely since <laughs> I don't really do Christmas. But anyway, yeah, so everything's better than Christmas. Excellent. Any questions cool. from anybody? Okay. Anybody else want to say hi and chime in? Good to see you, Jean. Nice to see you. And thank you. You did a great job. I've been trying to, to type you a, a note saying that thank you very much, but I must sign off now. Yeah, I, I need to, too. I keep erasing my note. <laughs> Good to see you, Jean. Thank you. Excellent. Bye-bye. Well, I will let you guys go then. Excellent. You, I hope Christine. everybody um, wants to contribute and we look forward to seeing more, more art and books and fun events with Neva uh, starting uh, September 1st and moving on. We're, we're getting back to it. Yay. Have a great night. Bye. Bye-bye.